All right, today's video is for all of you who have asked me to do a hot roller demonstration. So that is what we are going to do today. Now in New York, my roller set is a little bit different from my roller set in Florida. In Florida, I purchased two of the T3 sets. So when I get back to Florida, I'll redo this video using the T3 because there are some differences between them. But for New York, uh, I actually went to Ulta and I was going to buy the T3 here. But in order for me to be able to successfully achieve the look that I want with the T3 rollers, I have to buy two sets. And when I do that review, you will know why. So for years, I have been using this set of rollers. They have tweaked it, it's a different color now. Uh, I will show you the box first, and I actually found this at a store called Goldwell in Williamsville, New York, which is a professional hair store, but these can be found on Amazon. I will link the exact set because they are a little bit different. There are a few different sets and you don't want the one that has the little ringlet rollers to it. My set has all of the same size rollers and it has 12 of them. And the set is this one here. It is the Nano Titanium Babyliss Pro. There are 12 rollers that are identical. They come with their own clips, which I will show you how to use today, and they also come with these. I have to remember that this chair hits the desk. The noises bother many people, so just forgive me, my friends. I'm in a totally different recording area, and I all I'm thinking about is communicating with you. That is it. All right, so uh, we also have the clip. So now I thought I would just show you. This is my hair after I blow dry it, and I did uh, blow dry it last night and I slept on it. So this is what my hair looks like after I have slept on it. Now wow. for me, when I freshly wash my hair and I do my hot rollers immediately after, that is when I get my best results. This has been slept on. I washed it late last night. I did my round brush blow dry. I'm going to show you the products that I use before we even get started with the hot rollers. And um, so it will be, I'll get a good turnout, but not as good as if I had just blow dried it and put the rollers in afterwards. So if you have a special event, the best is to freshly wash, freshly blow dry, and put your rollers in, and then when I get to the part of taking them out, I'll show you how to do that. First, first this is lovely, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so for washing my hair, I did use the Colleen Rothschild Quench and Shine. Been using this for a very long time. I do alternate shampoos. I have two or three going at the same time. It's just how I've always been. You don't need to do that, but if you feel that your hair is just not getting the results that it used to, try switching up your shampoo and conditioner, or even use a cleansing shampoo uh, once or twice a month, and it may help you to improve uh, the results of your blow dry or your roller set, whatever you're using to get your hair to look its best. So I did use the Colleen Rothschild Quench and Shine Shampoo. Now because I do have white hair uh, and some blonde left over, the blonde has a tendency to go a little bit yellow on me because there's no toner on it, there's nothing, it's just a fade off. And it does give me a little bit of a yellow, yellow tinge. Some people, because of the hardness of their waters, the mineral content, uh, if you're in the presence of a smoker or uh, you are just out and about a lot and you're using products on your hair a lot, you may find that your white or gray gets a little bit dingy or even yellow. That's when you come in with a purple shampoo conditioner. So now I'm going to let you in on a little secret that I think works better for our silver white hair. I do not use purple shampoos. I use a purple conditioner. Now I have three that I like and I will put those below. I will link them below. I like them all. I do have a favorite. I believe it is, is the Surface uh, brand that I like the best, but it's a little bit hard to find and it's a little bit 
pricier, but I just feel it really conditions my dry hair the best. So right now I'm trying the Moroccan Oil Blonde Perfecting Purple Conditioner. So what I do is I put the conditioner on the white parts of my hair and on the ends. The hair that is underneath that is really more pewter, I don't really waste any of this product on because it's not going to do much for it. So I take my Colleen Rothschild conditioner and I use it on all other parts of my hair. Because unless your hair has a yellow tint to it, the purple shampoo is not going to do much for it. And if you are someone who has brown hair and you put highlights in and from time to time, they start looking brassy orange to you. You do not need a purple shampoo. You need a blue shampoo. So look for a blue based shampoo uh, or conditioner. I think the shampoos really dry my hair out, the purple ones. So that is why I use the conditioners. And I wanted to show you, and I'll show you right here on this little piece of tissue. This is the purple I look for. I don't go any lighter because they just don't work. So do you see how purple that is? That is what you should look for. These pale purple ones aren't really doing much. So if you are someone who's really suffering with the yellow undertones, make sure that your, your conditioner uh, or your shampoo, if you like using a shampoo, go right ahead. I just feel they're very drying. But make sure that it really is strong in violet purple color, okay? So now I'm getting ready to blow dry my hair. I first go in with the all-in-one leave-in conditioner from Moroccan Oil. This is the hydration. I just spritz this, spritz this on the ends. I don't really focus on the roots with this because this hair is so healthy. I don't really need it. Next, I will go in with my Moroccan oil. This is what I use here in Buffalo. My favorite oil on my wet hair is by uh, Kerastase, and it is the Ultime. It's the, I don't know, I'll put it below. I don't know the exact name. I think it's all team something. But anyway, uh, I use about two squirts of this and that is it, two pumps. Massage it through my hands really well and I just take it from here down. I don't bother putting it on uh, the roots because they just don't need it. For my roots to give myself a little bit of a lift, I am using the Root Boost. This gets sprayed on the root area only. It doesn't get sprayed on the ends. I want my lift in the root area because that's where I, I feel I get the most volume and lift. So I use this on my roots. Don't overuse it. You just need a little bit. Uh, now this here I should have mentioned before the oil. Oil always goes last, my friends. Once you put oil on, nothing else is going to penetrate through it. So oil always goes last. So before I did my oil, I did spritz my ends just lightly with this. It's a new product. It is the Kerasilk Airy Powerful Flawless. It's a volumizing spray just to see if it does anything. I'll let you know. I will definitely know for sure. So, so there is one step I do, which some may find to be excessive, but I like my hair to be really shiny and it is pretty shiny already. But I do love the Colleen Rothschild hair serum as a finishing oil, a very small amount at just through the ends. Before I do my hot rollers, I will go ahead and just put a small, small amount. I massage it into my hands and then I will just take it on my ends, not on my root area or anything like that, just the ends. And this is just going to make my ends look really, really healthy and give them great shine. You need a very small amount of it. There's no need to overuse any of these products. The more product you put on, the more you're going to weigh your hair down. So really play around with your products and learn how much your hair needs. I have very fine textured hair, but I have a ton of it. If you are someone who has very thin hair, you are going to need different products perhaps, and you are also going to need to learn how much or how little of that product you need. I had to do the same thing. It wasn't just, oh, let me take this big little, you know, pump here and put it through. I had to learn some things. I can't, I can't use more than one and a half, two pumps of this, or my hair weighs down and it doesn't, it won't curl at all. Okay. 
So now we're going to get started. It's starting to get a little warm in here with the hot rollers on and underneath the lights. So I want to get busy because if my scalp starts to sweat, it's going to interfere with the turnout. All right, so my rollers have been on for about 25, 30 minutes. You want them to get very, very hot. And this is what the set looks like. All 12 rollers are the same, has an on and off button. And there is one roller in the center that has a little red dotted it. Once that has changed to white, it means your rollers are ready. Now mine have been on for a while, so they may be a little hot. Be careful because the edges of them get a little bit hotter than the center. They do have a nice little plush lining on them, which helps to protect the hair. So we are just going to get started. And what I do is I start at the root. And here is a trick to hot rollers. You don't want to take a ton of hair. That's why it's important to know how many rollers you actually need and the size of the roller matters. Now I like this size. I think this is one and a half inch because it gives me a lot of curl at the end. If I were to use larger rollers, all I would get is fullness. I wouldn't get any curl and I do like a little bit of curl. So I'm going to take a little bit of my hair and it's important. I want to make sure that my part is pretty straight here because you don't want to be pulling from the other rollers. So I'm just going to comb through and make sure there are no snarls. And I'm going to try to get down as low as I possibly can. I'll pull the hair forward. Okay, I want you to really see I have the roller. Now I'm taking it and I roll it right to the end and I hold those end pieces in. Notice the amount of hair I have. I have just enough to stay on the roller and then I'm going to roll it and try to force the hair into the center and that will help to keep the roller, the hair on the roller. So to make it stay, because you do want to have a little bit of tension here, I'm going to take this. Most people go in and do it this way from the back. That's not how you want to do it. You want to take it in from the front, slide it on, and then you go in with the little clip that comes with them and clip over it. And make sure that you're just clipping on the roller and you're not really getting much of, the, much of your other hair in with it. So that is how you want it to sit. It sits up straight. It's got a lot of lift here, which is going to give you your volume. Now, if you're someone who still struggles with volume after you have tried this technique, that is when you're going to come in with a little bit of hairspray and just spray the roots lightly. You don't need to spray them heavy. Now I'm going to try this hairspray. I don't normally spray my roots, but I'm going to do it for today's video. Uh, this is the Kara Silk because I think a lot of people do struggle with getting that lift. You can spritz afterwards, but once you put the clip on, it kind of covers the hair, so it's really not going to give you that little bit of stiffness. I have no idea how this works, so I'm only going to do it on the crown area. Uh, I'm not really going to do it on all of the rollers, but this is a fixed, versatile, protected. It's a multi-purpose hairspray, but what's interesting about it is the cap will twist. When you're on the black, it's giving you a heavy spray. When you're on the white, it gives you a light spray. So you can adjust how you use this also. So again, I'm going to go in with my fingers. Now, if you can't work with your fingers, then try to work with a comb or a brush. Again, I'm trying to take a decent piece that's not going to really spill off of the rollers. And I just guide it slightly forward. And I'm overextending today because I really want you to be able to see how I wrap my ends. So I have my roller. I'm wrapping the ends. Notice my fingers are staying on it. And these do get pretty warm. And that's what you want. You need a warm roller. And then I am rolling it. And I'm going to lift it up. So you notice the tension on the root. Okay. And then you're going to take your clip. And this is important to do both steps because it does help them to stay in place. And I'm just going to go ahead and push that in. I'm going to take another roller and I'm just going to clip this on and that will secure it. So both of those rollers are in there pretty good. Okay, so I'm just going to finish this up. And because I've pretty much walked you through what I'm doing here, I'm just going to fast forward for a minute and I'll be right back. 
would show you the front piece. Now the front piece, I do bring it forward slightly, but I want you to watch how I do this. I'm going to wrap the hair as usual, and you don't want to twist those ends or bend them. You want to make sure they're smoothly on the roller, roll it back. Now I do roll, and then I lift up because I don't want to have my hair go like this when it comes out of the rollers. But I also want to make sure that I'm lifting on up enough and I'm not laying it flat on the actual root because then you will have a flat spot. So I'm lifting up and pulling with that tension again. And it's not going to harm the hair to have that tension. And I don't feel that hot rollers are as damaging to the hair as flat irons because they only get so hot. They may be hot to your fingers because your fingers are sensitive and perhaps you'll even find them a little hot on your head, but the, this is a more controlled heat than the flat iron, which you can have go up to 400 degrees or, you know, you couldn't touch your flat iron. You can touch the rollers. You're not going to burn yourself with them. All right, so now for the side, I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to take a section. Now sometimes I will roll my hair back and up. It all depends, but for the most part I do a basic curl. Now this, you notice I'm lifting up because I want the lift in my root area. So I'm lifting up and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm twisting the hair around. Now notice this, I'm taking and I'm twisting around with my finger. I'm smoothing it down and then I wrap it holding those ends until they are secured under the rest of the hair. Notice the direction is pulling up so that I have a little bit of a lift here that's going to give you the volume. Now this you are going to go in from underneath and you are going to take the clip and if you'll notice the tooth is longer on one side I always put this on the top. The longer of the teeth go on the top so that they really hold it snugly in place. Okay? And I'll do the same thing here. I just take that. Now this is where if it's too hot on your ear, you just take a piece of tissue and put it under there. Because sometimes it gets too hot for my ear. Fast forward right. through this and move on. Okay, so I have four rollers left, so I'm going to take one section right here. Now the back is the only place that some hair may hang off, but I'm going to take the back and I'm going to over direct this up. So I'm really moving up. Now this is where I'm going to take a little of this hairspray and I'm going to spray just the root area. Notice I didn't spray my ends. You don't want to spray your ends because it interferes with the way it curls. It really does. It makes them look crispy. So I'm going to take this, wrap it around just like I did the front pieces, hold my finger on that hair, and then I'm going to guide it down. And I notice my fingers are pushing the hair constantly back on the roller. So see, now I have this rolled down with a slight lift up. And I'm going to take my clip, put it in, take my other clip, and clip the roller into place. So now I have all this hair left and I have three rollers. So I'm going to take another section right here and I'm just going to lift that hair up, over direct it so I get some volume and I'll go ahead and make a spritz again. Spritz that root area and I've got it on the um, light mist and I'm going to go ahead curl my ends under, hold my finger there, and just roll it back down into place. And I'm rolling it and pushing it all back on with my hands. And there we have it, okay? okay and then, so I have two clips left, two little prong things left, and two rollers left. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this hair and evenly split it in half and pull it around. Now again, you, if you're looking for, if you prefer more your curl flipping up, you can easily just hold the hair out like this and roll it up. I have a tendency to roll most of it down. Now when I get to this part, these hairs will start to fall out. So I will show you how I work with those. So I'm gonna take my roller and I'm going to just guide it down and I'm going to wrap those ends around, again, 
smoothing them with my finger, holding my finger older, over them until I get all my hair on there. And then I'm just going to take this and guide it in there and wrap it all in. And that so is how I put my hot rollers in. Now people always ask me, well, how long do you leave your rollers in? I leave them in until they are completely cooled off. If you don't allow them to cool, you will not get the bend or curl that you want. Just think of it this way. When you are blow drying, you, I got to get these ends in there. When you are blow drying your hair, you give it a cool shot, which helps to lock in that curl. It also adds a beautiful shine and the rollers do the exact same thing. As they cool down, that bend is then formed and your hair will stay that way when you take it out. And your hair will also have a beautiful shine to it because of the products you used. And you don't have to use the products I use. If you have products that you absolutely love, those are the products you use. All right, my friends. So so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to record a, another video. I have a couple of new things uh, that I want to share with you and uh, many were asking me uh, to demonstrate the foundation with a less expensive facial oil. So I'm going to do that in uh, the video that I'm going to record now. So it will probably take me about 35 minutes to record that video, maybe even longer because I make mistakes along the way and I start over. So my hair, I will let you know, it is now 25 to 10. I'm going to get started on that video as soon as I turn this video off. So I'll be able to know exactly how long these hot rollers were in my hair. And then all you do is switch your rollers off and uh, put them right back into the container and the cord wraps around it nicely. They're neatly, to, they are neat to store. And the nice thing about this uh, Babyliss is that these are only $59. The T3, I think, are up to like $139, $149. And you're only getting four large rollers and four medium rollers. And you either have to buy a second set or you have to buy more rollers and decide, do I want volume today or do I want curl? And those would be the rollers that you would heat up. But when I'm in Florida and I actually have my T3 hot rollers with me, I will go over all of that. If you are interested in the comments, let me know if you would like to see the comparison between the two. All right. So I will be right back after I record my next video, my friends. I'm so happy to be back. I love you guys so much. All right. Enough of that. I'll be back. All right. I am done with my other video. This uh, look will be coming either before or after. I don't know, but you will see it eventually. And uh, it is now 25 to 11, so it took me a little bit. Uh, so that's how long my hair has been in the rollers. They are completely cool now. So all I do is I take the clip off and I will go ahead and just take the clip out and the rollers I just bring out as gentle as I can. This is the curl that you see now. Have a slit. They just go right back on, no particular order because they're all the same size. And the clip has a little compartment. You just put it right back in. Now, I always take my clips out before I heat the rollers up because they get hot if you don't. So take them out. But that is the perfect place to store them so you don't lose any. And I'm just going to continue all the way around taking out the rollers and the clips and most of the hair should come off very easy for you. So I just gently remove it and let it fall. I try not to touch, tug, or pull. <laughs> and that just helps to keep the uh, curl in shape. The more you play with your hair, the less curl you're going to have. So I'm just going to take them out. You can see they're just like little ringlets at the end, which is absolutely perfect for me. And I'm just going to continue all the way around and be right back. I'm just going to fast forward through this. So I have taken my hair out of the rollers and this is the curl. Okay. It's all on the end and there's a little bit of volume on the top. So I'm not one to play with my hair a lot. A lot of people will take a brush and start brushing through it. The minute you take a brush, you pull out the curl. Now, if you're going after just a slight wave, 
that's okay. If you're somebody who struggles with your hair holding on to what you're doing, then you may want to spray the ends with a light, light, light hairspray before you go and finger through it. So, so I have two ways of doing my hair. I will either just flip my hair and just finger through it lightly, or I will flip my head upside down and lightly shake. So if it doesn't turn out the way I like it just by doing this, then I might go ahead and flip my head over. But let's just see what we get today. And that is all I would do. That would be my style. I would take my roots and I would just do this and I would give them a quick spritz, not a lot, and I just finger. I don't play with the ends anymore. That is it. This is what it looks like. I don't do anything more than that, my friends. Now, if you are someone that likes to flip your head over and get yourself some more volume, your hairspray, you can go ahead and do that. If you need to spray because you don't think the style will stay, this is how I spray my hair. I spray the root and let it drop. Okay, and that's how I get volume. I don't mess around. And I just sprayed my contact. If you have a piece that you don't really like what it's doing, just lightly move that piece. Don't go playing with your hair because you're gonna end up, it's just going to start flattening out on you. So this is what I'm dealing with today. Now your ends, I would just take them Spritz. This is a very light hairspray. I don't like crunchy hair. And that is it, my friends. That is how I style my hair. Now, if you look at the back, it's just the same thing. Now, where I sprayed the hair uh, that I was ro hot, putting hot rollers, if I go up underneath, I can feel it's a little crunchy there. That's going to hold the volume up in the back. But this is pretty much what I do. Now, if I this piece here, I would have to spray it. Again, very light hairspray. I do not like crunchy. That is all I do for my hair. If you start playing around with it or you work with it too much, you're going to take all of the curl away, all of the volume away. You should not have to play much with it at all. And that is all I do for a hot roller set. If you follow these steps, you should have no problem putting your rollers in and taking them out because a lot of people get their hot rollers caught because they put too much hair on the hot roller. If you allow your hot rollers to get to the temperature they should be at, you get them in your hair, your hair should be fully dry, no dampness at all, the, if you want lift, your direction has to be there, the tension has to be there. If you're someone that just wants the ends to be curled, then you just curl and put your rollers right about here and clip them in and leave them. And then you'll be flat on top and you'll have just all your curl, curl on the bottom. It really is as simple as that. Some people's hair will perform better than others. My hair does not, I cannot get my hair to style like this with a curling iron. Some people's hair responds better that way. Mine has always loved hot rollers. And like I said to you the other day, they are back with a vengeance, which puts me back in style, my friends. All right, so I hope that some of these tips really help you. It does begin in the shower. Now, if I were to uh, you know, sleep on my hair today and tomorrow decide, oh, I'm going to use my hot rollers, it would not look like this. It would look totally different than this. I would not have the lift that I have because the oils from my scalp are already starting to build up, which means the weight of the hair is going to change. If you want this type of hair, and I also don't like texturizing sprays because they take the shine away, if you, especially having white hair. I have to have shine. So I so don't even like texturizing sprays. Now, if you're someone that's going to use a texturizing spray, I suggest using it underneath and not on the top parts of your hair because you will dull the hair down and 
I don't know, for me, texturizing sprays make the hair look just slightly damaged. That's just my experience with them. I don't, I'm not saying that's, that's a given, but for my texture hair, certain products just do not work. And I do not like a crunchy hairstyle. So this hairspray is very, very light. Now I could change it and it would apply a lot more hairspray if I take it onto the black, which if it were really raining out and it was, or very, I find in Florida, I do have to use a little more hairspray, but for the most part, I don't use a lot of it, but my hair will stay like this. Now, the only thing that will happen is this drives me nuts being on my face, so I'll tuck it behind my ear. So that will change the look of the hairstyle because I can't really, I don't really like my hair laying on my face, but if I'm being all fancy dancy, I don't mind my hair on my face for a little while because it goes with the ambiance of the evening. But for the most part, this is how you will find me. All right, my friends, I hope that these tips help you. Again, hair must be dry. You really have to have it smooth to begin with when you're putting it on the roller. Don't put too much on the roller. If you put too much on the roller, you may have a hard time getting it off or you won't get the lift because some areas won't be curling because you they're hanging off the roller. So it, it all matters. It all matters, my friends. And I know I'm going to get people say, I don't have time for that. Well, this video was for those of you that have time, <laughs> I guess. All right, my friends, so that is it for today's video. Uh, let me know in the comments if you're going to give hot rollers a try. Maybe there's something you do to make your hair. You may have a different texture hair that uh, you might have a set of rollers that really work for you. I also use Velcro rollers. Um, I just round brush sometimes. It all depends on my mood, but this is my most favorite for my hair is this style right here. This is how I love to wear my hair. With growing my hair out, I was not sure how this was going to look on me, but I still love it, my friends, all right? All right, so if you haven't already subscribed, you know I'd love to have you as an ageless beauty, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Right next to it is the bell. Notifies you of all the videos that I'm putting up. Until the next time, my friends, go out in the world, be lovable, and remember, it is okay to love your age. It truly is. I love you all. Bisous.